already off to a really good start. Going through some of this rock, some cute fishies. Oh, and there's a fish right there too. First big fish of the trip. Oh yeah, I see the vertebrae right there. There's a fish, and right there's a fish too. See its vertebrae underneath its uh, tail. Yep. Cool. Where we are now, only about 10 to 15 feet of the Green River Formation is well laminated. So each one of these layers represents a different period of deposition, and you would have had these micritic limestone oozes that would have rained from the top of the lake and settled on the bottom. And that ooze is what preserves these fish. And now 52 million years later, Joe and I are here to try to dig them up. Right now we're putting the chisel right in the middle of the slab to start a run. And so this crack that's forming right here, that's the run we want to follow. So we're going to try to follow this around this whole slab. What'd you get? Look at that fish. Ooh, that is as nice as these diplos come out. Deep red color too. So we were talking about how Joe does find thousands of fish, but 90% of those, or even more, aren't in good quality. They're disarticulated, they're in pieces, they're really, really poorly preserved. But this, this is what you're looking for when you're looking for fossil fish. Why are you talking down on my fish? I'm sorry. It's not cool, I worked hard for these. <laughs> I don't appreciate that at all. Get that out of my face. <laughs> all right, this one's ready to peel. Yoop! A little dorsally compressed fish. We call them jumpers. Jumpers. Because it looks like they're jumping. I didn't notice at first, but we have another fish undercover right here too. So we have a lot of rock to go to, but when we find something nice or extraordinary, make sure to let you guys in on it. This is something you do not see every day. That's about the prettiest one I've ever found. It's got great orange red color to it. So this is a male stingray, you can tell because of these little claspers. They use that to hold on to the females when they're mating. Because they don't have arms. They're about the thickness of a couple sheets of paper when they get out to these rays, so it's really hard to find them. They usually show up in cross-section with the tail and little teeny tiny hints of ray bones in the rock. But this one's split right on it, that's why it's a nice positive and negative. You want to tell me what happened when you found this? I screamed a lot, and then all the guests in the quarry came running over to see what I found. And I said, oh yeah, I, I found a stingray. You found a stingray. That's nuts. No, that's a stingray. Apparently someone found a fossil turtle while we weren't here, so we're walking over to the storage container right now to check it out. What are we looking at, Joe? Oh. Ooh, stingray. Big stingray. It's a nice one. The scuff from above the rock. Really? It looks like scab layer almost with the yeah. peel. But wow, there's been some interesting stuff found so far. Yeah. That's not a trionyx. That's not a soft shell. That's a, that's a pond turtle. Yeah, there's the there's head. Faded. And the feet are down here. It's faded though. Where's that book? We could look it up real quick. It's one of these. Right there? Maybe. Pond turtle, river turtle. Not soft shell. No, it's not a soft shell. It's not the long tailed ones, is it? Must be one of these rare ones. Okay. One of the pond turtles or river turtles. They look awesome when it's prepped out. That's cool. Now, there are two reasons why that turtle is really cool. The first is that it's just a turtle. Turtles in this formation are, you'd think they're common, but any kind of vertebrate fossil from a mammal or reptile is super rare. The second is that it was actually a river turtle. So most turtles out here are the pond turtles because it's a giant lake that actually came from one of the rivers that fed this lake. And so fish, turtles, and animals from those rivers are super rare. So that's got me excited to do some more looking. Let's find some more fish and fossils. Joe just salvaged something really unique from the garbage pile. That is the imprint to a palm tree, palm from from a palm tree. Do you think you'll go ahead and paint that to enhance it and let people know where all the different plant matter is? No, all my fossils are 100% natural. The only negative about this quarry is there isn't as much kerogen, so the color is completely lost in this palm frond, but in the 18 inch layer, that would be nice black, beautiful streaks, 
but Joe might be able to make it look nice by. Yeah, I'll paint the paint the center veins brown, and then paint the rest of it kind of an off, like golden brown color. Just that paints it. We're pretty used to seeing those in Florida, but that's crazy to think that these palms were out here in Wyoming 52 million years ago. It's hard to believe that the desert quarry I am currently walking in used to be a lush tropical lake 52 million years ago, full of crocodiles, turtles, birds, palm trees, you name it. Sometimes all you find guys are coprolites, or otherwise known as fossil They're probably left by a turtle or something. Yeah, it's an impressive piece of poop. Uh, that's good shit. You feeling alright? Not really. Dehydration and a bad diet. Help the food and working my ass off. Kill me. Yeah. Not really, but good. Now this is exactly how you want to find a fossil fish. This is a myoplosis covered with a thin layer of calcite. It's calcium carbonate rock, limestone. And we can tell that it's got a gaping mouth which would be really cool if it's got an aspiration and swallowed a fish and dying on it. But everything underneath this is gonna be really well preserved and Joe's gonna prep it out and make it look beautiful. Hey buddy, are you tired? They call me Joey Big Slabs because I slap big slabs. <laughs> you do slap big slabs. Mr. Joey Big Slabs. Man, I don't want to get food. You better pass out. When the plates get this thin, it can be really difficult to pop them up. But this one's actually behaving pretty well, despite being so thin. Let's hope there's a fish or something underneath it. They call me John Thin Rock. I split it real thin. It's a little bit too thin there, John. Any fish you find are gonna look like junk. Also, there's a, there's a fish right there by your left hand. In there? Right there? Yep. yep. Ooh, you look so tan, Joe. Call me Joey Big Fish. Because I find big fish. So that's the mile from earlier. They call me Joey Bigger Fish. And here's the mayo that Joe just found. It's a bigger one. Because I find bigger fish. <laughs> That's a well, big this one, fish. This one lost the uh, pectoral spines and the gill plate on this side. But you can just cut that out. And Glue transfer it back. Glue it back in there. Maybe. There's not that much missing, but it's really worth doing that with it. You can see the impression of the jaw pretty well from under here. That's yeah, it's closed. Put your hand up for a scale. That's a big fishy. Our neighbors just found a really nice myoplosis. Third good one of this trip. That is awesome. Good split too. Only missing the tiniest bit of the tail. But that'll look really pretty if prepped correctly. That's awesome. Congrats, man. <laughs> Thank you. It's a big mile too. He's got his mouth open. I can see how this could get addicting. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, I just more. gotta go a little, a little more, more, a little more. <laughs> I shouldn't have showed that to you. <laughs> yeah. he, that's, he did. That's where he yeah. said, you ought to try digging here. And the first one, nothing. Next one, first split. Yeah, I had wow. some people that I did that to before. I told them to dig there, and they, they took it down, took it down, took it down, took it down. They got little fish, dips, and stuff like that. They stopped. Yeah, they just that's didn't rare. go far enough. <laughs> Congrats again, guys. That's a nice piece. Ooh, that's a pretty Oh, wow. Yeah. Nope. Cool. The puddle layer might be in this block. So you're at the base of the quarry right now, the thin red line? Yeah, right here. Oh yeah, I see it. And somewhere in this block there might be a puddle layer with a whole bunch of little teen thing fish in it. That'd be cool if we can pull that up. It might not be here because it's, you know, a puddle. They're not 100% guaranteed to be there. We got a big old slab we need to lift. You ready? Put up that way. That way? Kind of. No, never mind. Fishy right there? Yeah, down that very bottom. I'll never get it out. 
<laughs> Big old heavy some in there. Heavy enough. You want to work that rock or you want to work that rock? Oh, um, it doesn't matter to me. I'll go ahead and just work this one. I already got it. I kind of want that one for the puddle layer. Oh. Oh. Bye, Rock. Oh, Rochambeau you. I pulled it up. <laughs> okay. Rochambeau you for okay. it. It's Rochambeau. Oh, <laughs> all right. No, 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 no. <laughs> So this thin red line right here that you can follow all the way across, that marks the very bottom of the splitfish quarry. Here's a better view of it. That's what we're trying to get down to. There's usually big nighties in this layer right above it. Usually. There's one of those big nighty as we were talking about. Ooh, and a nice nighty right underneath. We've got a blown up ray over here that was in all this eroded stuff. But that's luck of the draw. You can't always find them super nice. Nope. Here are all those pieces to that ray that was in the eroded stuff. It's a real shame, but that's how it happens sometimes. So a lot's actually there. We're missing the very front and probably a piece of the tail. Joe just found. No, found there's the tail. There's it looks a tail. Like it, you got the it, cross it section. It ends in here. I see it doesn't that cross come section out. again. That little cross section right there. Is the cross section to array. Really hard to spot these sometimes. We've reached the bottom of the quarry. And we found a lot of nice fish this trip, but we're done for summer. All that's left is to pack up, get home, and prep some of these fish for you guys. We have made it safely home and we are about to show you all some of our favorite finds from hunting the split fish quarry in Wyoming this year. What we got, Joe? We got a turtle. That, that's a turtle? Mm-hmm. A Baptemis Wyomingensis turtle. Its shell was ripped apart so I had to piece the shell back together and restore a few scoots. But that's what gives it this three-dimensional look. Usually they're completely flat. But this one's pretty unique in that you have all these freestanding spurs and the skull is peeking out right here. You can see its nose right there, the tips of its feet. This over here is a big Ferriotis. It's about two feet long. John actually found this one. It was one of the few that I actually let him find. So generous of you. Yeah, it's a nice fish. It's worth a decent amount of money if he'd ever paint it in. But he's too lazy to do that. I like it natural. Well, pieced together natural. I like yeah. it jigsaw. Yeah. It's kind of cool to show what wasn't there and what was, because this piece was in what, 17 pieces when we found it? I think it was One, more than that. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, twelve, thirteen sandwiched together. At least thirteen. Probably more. Because this had to be glued back in, all of this had to be glued back together and clamped, and then I cleaned down into it. So yeah, it was in quite a few pieces, and we didn't show it on camera because there wasn't really much to see besides the cross sections, but it's one of my favorite fish, and I think it's really cool to see how it was pieced back together and how Joe prepped it. Oh, I didn't film prepping it. I'm not gonna show people how I do that stuff. Are you kidding me? Then they'll be able to do it. No, pay me to do it. Did you pay me for that? I don't have a receipt, pay me. This is a palm. They're just colorless imprints in this layer. So I filled it in with a little diluted brown paint and slapped a couple of fish in it, like this Prisca Cara and this Diplomistus. It turned out really nice. Yeah. It's a you beautiful piece. You can see piece. we got modern palms here. They look, you know, not that different. This would have been a pretty big palm. These palm fronds get up to 10 feet long from the base where it attached to the tree up to the tips. So they call the petioli? Petiole. Petiole. Petioli. It's not a Italian pasta dish, it's a biological term, <laughs> dummy. <laughs> but yeah, this turned out really well. You have the complete eye orbital, a lot of the teeth, but all this was just completely sheared in half, so all along here has all been glued back down in. I love that the, the pectoral fins, though, are down. You could see how large they were. Yeah. It's a beautiful fish. Really it's fun a, trip. Yeah. Too bad you can't go this year. I know. Introducing Joey B Digital Shorts. <laughs> <laughs>
No, probably not. John will scrap that idea once he sees how terrible they are. <laughs> If you guys enjoyed this video and you want to see more of Joe and I in the future, please subscribe to the channel. And as always, keep on digging science. Tell them that I'm trying to sell the turtle. Oh, you want to sell the turtle? Yeah, the turtle's for sale. If you want to buy this turtle, you can email Joe. His email is on the screen right now, and it's also linked in the description below. Budget turtle. Not Budget. even all that. It, that's worth a decent amount of money. Yeah, it's still worth a lot. <laughs> It's not scientifically valuable like we thought because that carapace was ripped apart. If it had been laid back together perfectly, it would have been the most complete Baptemis, but it just it just didn't work out that way. Oh well. Oh well. Is that for sale too? That palm? Yeah, you're keeping that. It looks good up on the wall, so I mean, if somebody gives me the right amount of money for it, everything's for sale.